Welcome to the Mindfulness Meditation Podcast. I'm your host, Dawn Eshelman. Every Wednesday at the Rubin Museum of Art in Chelsea, we present a meditation session led by a prominent meditation teacher from the New York area. This podcast is a recording of our weekly practice. If you would like to join us in person, please visit our website at rubinmuseum.org slash meditation. We are proud to be partnering with Sharon Salzberg and the teachers from the New York Insight Meditation Center. In the description for each episode, you will find information about the theme for that week's session, including an image of a related artwork chosen from the Rubin Museum's permanent collection. And now, please enjoy your practice. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Mindfulness Meditation, as you know, is presented with Sharon Salzberg, the New York uh, Insight Meditation Center, and the Interdependence Project. And you today are just part, a fraction really, of the whole experience of what the Rubin could be. You're taking part in a space that is separated from the rest of the museum and yet you know the rest of the museum exists and you know there are other experiences to be had. For example, you could take part and contribute your voice to the Om Lab on the sixth floor, where your voice, your chant of the seminal sublime syllable Om, will then be accumulated along with every other visitor's Om. And there have been over 3,000 people who have contributed their chant since we opened that experience just over two weeks ago. So the, your voice is also then becoming part of a communal voice of everybody who's come to the museum and wanted to take part in a ritual, if you will. So this afternoon, Sharon is going to guide us into how we can be whole, being whole, what does that mean? When we all just see, through our limited perception, a fractal of existence. And so that's what we're going to explore, not only today, but for all the sessions that Sharon Salzo is going to be here for the month of March, which is a happy thing indeed. So what you have just seen as you came in were these fractal impressions, these are stills from Kandroma, which is a video installation on the fourth floor, part of our Sacred Spaces exhibition. And this was uh, an artwork that was created by an art collective called Soundwalk, who walked the Himalayas recording found sounds and installed those sounds in the Sacred Spaces exhibition on the fourth floor. They also custom made a kaleidoscope, which they then focused on things that were ephemeral, like prayer flags. And so that kaleidoscope effect that you see here um, is actually in video form mesmerically upstairs on the fourth floor. So I hope um, you want to follow Jeremy upstairs afterwards to experience that in real time. But that's an example of the fractal impression of what we perceive only part, ever part of the whole. So how do we understand what that whole is? Well, fortunately, we have the accomplished meditation teacher, Sharon Salzberg, to guide us there. Sharon, if you need an introduction to Sharon, let me just do it for you. Not only is she the co-founder of the Insight Meditation Center in Barrie, Massachusetts, I've been teaching and being a pioneer of meditation practices for over 45 years, ever since birth, basically. And, um, and she does not stop making her teachings and insights available. And her latest book is called Real Love, The Art of Mindful Connection, comes out in June. And I'm sure we'll be celebrating that publication here as well, because basically the Reuben is Sharon's home, we hope, and yours as well. So Sharon, will you make us whole again? Sharon Salzberg, everyone. We're already whole, that's the secret. Now you don't have to come back three more times. 
Hello, well, this is kind of my home, actually, uh, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to say. <clears throat> I'm a little sick, as you can hear, but I feel okay. I've just uh, been traveling, <laughs> and so I'm, my flight from San Francisco was delayed five and a half, or maybe it was six hours the other day. Walked into my apartment at 4.15 in the morning. Uh, somewhere in my really low period at the San Francisco airport after five hours, somebody came up to me and said, are you Sharon Salzberg? And I thought, thank goodness, I'm not having a temper tantrum. <laughs> like on the ground. So I really felt like doing, you know. And I said, oh, are you on this flight? And she said, no, I'm on this other flight, but I saw you from, you know. Like, it's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So it is a great delight to be here. Um, and I've been fascinated with fractals. I'm not sure I fully understand them at all, but I've been fascinated with fractals for a long time. Um, as I do understand it, a fractal is when a part of something is, can represent the whole. Like if you look at a part of a coastline, it represents the entire coastline. If you look at a part of a fern, it is representative of the entire fern, right? So that glimpse of a <clears throat> just a part brings us to a sense of the whole inherently. And as soon as I began to uh, <clears throat> hear about that and see these representations, I started thinking about the path to liberation uh, because I think it is exactly like that. Our mind, certainly my mind, is conditioned to want more, to get more instruction, the more elaborate, sophisticated instruction, a different method, a more esoteric, exotic, elaborate explanation. And to think that you kind of got it already can be very frustrating because that implies we have to live it, right? There's something else we have to do um, to make that real. So I uh, have often spoken, I'm sure many of you have heard me talk about my first meditation course, which was the first time I sat, which was in uh, India in January of 1971. And the first instruction I received was Sit and feel your breath. Just sit and feel your breath. And even then I was disappointed. I thought, you know, where's the magical, esoteric, fantastic <clears throat> technique that's going to wipe out all my suffering and make me a totally happy person? Um, so I waited and waited and waited and kept doing what they suggested I do. And it's been over 45 years. And <laughs> Sometimes it's not that different, right? I mean, there are lots of different approaches. There are lots of different techniques. But it's not like that was 101, you know, never to be seen again, once mastered. Because right in there, that seemingly simple instruction, it's like a fractal. There's a tremendous amount about the entire path. You sit down, put your attention on the feeling of the breath. <clears throat> There's a lot spoken or unspoken about balance there. Sometimes people feel, you know, if they like get a death grip on the breath, their minds won't wander, and actually they'll wander more. The instruction actually is rest your attention lightly, like a butterfly resting on a flower. That's something different. I think one of the things we see about our lives, if we start bringing mindfulness to activities, is that we often apply inappropriate force. We try too hard. I have a friend who decided, um, we were just kind of choosing activities throughout the day, and he decided that brushing his teeth was gonna be his mindfulness exercise. And he said the first thing he noticed was that <clears throat> he was holding onto that toothbrush so tightly, it might as well have been a jackhammer about to leap out of his hand and cut off his head. And he found that interesting. He thought, I wonder if I do that a lot. 
And I think we kind of do do that a lot. So we rest our attention lightly. That's not that easy. And just as I was surprised to discover, most of us discover it's not like 900 breaths before your mind wanders, right? It's two. <laughs> or one. Maybe it's four. And then we're gone. We're lost in the past somewhere. Not in a useful way, but in a kind of useless way. Very often they say when our minds go to the past, <clears throat> we go back to some incident where we now have some regret. But not to see how we might make amends or, or for lessons learned. We just go over it and over it and over it and over it. And or our minds go to the future. And we create a scenario that has not happened and may never happen but we're filled with anxiety because of it. Like, I don't know, I have to book this flight. What if I book another flight? And it's like, gonna be at one o'clock and you know, maybe there'll be a blizzard, God knows. You know, and like, I'm gonna be at Kennedy for like 24 hours. And, you know, I'll never get to Maui. And like, really? Like, first of all, it's like May or something. And you know, it's just cause I'm in that mood now, you know? Nothing's going to work. So our minds jump to the past, jump to the future, and there comes this magic moment when we realize, oh, <clears throat> it's been quite some time since I last felt a breath. There's mindfulness there. That's significant. We realize when we're present, we realize I've been lost. I've been disconnected. That's part of the whole. I have a teacher who um, had a kind of trick question he used to ask people, which was something like, how many breaths can you be with before your mind starts to wander? And the reason it was a trick question was because they felt it took a good degree of mindfulness to notice how much your mind wandered. So a good answer was like two breaths. If you said, I can be with my breath for 45 minutes, and my mind never wanders, they thought you were so lost in space <laughs> that you don't have a clue what was going on. <clears throat> and sometimes I used to be in the back of the room and I'd hear him ask people that, and they'd say, I can be with the breath for 45 minutes. And my mind never wanders, and I think, don't say that. <laughs> you think that's such a good answer? It's not such a good answer. So shining a light on when we're present when we're distracted, what we're feeling, what's going on is a part of the whole. We do that right in that moment. Oh, it's been quite some time since I last felt a breath. We practice letting go, which is essential to the entire path. If we learn nothing else and we learn that, that's enormous. It's also not so easy. <clears throat> When we think of letting go, we think of rejection and spurning something and saying it's worthless. Or This is very different. It's a very gentle relinquishing. It's like saying not quite now. Either my attention needs to be here or done this 90 billion times in the last 15 minutes. That's kind of enough. Or... What's it like to recognize what I'm feeling and realize I have a choice? I can follow it, into it, or I can let it go. That's the power of awareness. Not because we hate what's going on or we fear it, because we kind of don't need it right now. It's what one of my teachers once called exercising letting go muscle. That's enormous. And we begin again. We bring our attention back to the feeling of the breath, which inevitably, to do that well, means we're doing it with kindness toward ourselves. Because that's also not so easy. More commonly, it's like, damn it, I'm thinking. Why am I always thinking? 
No one else in the room is thinking. <laughs> I'm like the worst meditator that ever lived. <laughs> you know, all of which like not only extends the period of the distraction, sometimes considerably, but so demoralizing. It's so exhausting. There's something so um, pure in a way about letting go and beginning again. It is an expression of our wholeness. So it's not like we're seeking wholeness. In each of these moments, we're resting in a kind of integrity or wholeness. And it's expressing itself in that moment through recognition, through presence, through being able to let go, through kindness. So that's why we do the same old instruction. Not always, but very often. Because it's enough, because we're enough. And that's the process. Okay, so let's sit together. We'll have a fractal experience. See if you can sit comfortably. <clears throat> There's some balance they say already reflected in our posture. We want some energy in your body, but not like so much. You also want to be relaxed and at ease. If you like, before you get to the breath, you can start by listening to sound, the sound of my raspy voice, other sounds. It's a way of relaxing deep inside, allowing our experience to come and go. And bring your attention to the feeling of your body sitting, whatever sensations you discover. And bring your attention to the feeling of your breath. Just the normal, natural breath. Wherever you feel it most clearly. Bring your attention there and rest. See if you can feel one breath. <clears throat>
And when you find your attention has wandered, <clears throat> remember the entire path is right there. Your attention will wander. But what happens next? See if you can let go gently. See if you could begin again with a full heart, with kindness towards yourself. Even if you have to do that over and over and over again, that's the path.
That concludes this week's practice. If you'd like to attend in person, please check out our website, rubinmuseum.org slash meditation to learn more. Sessions are free to Rubin Museum members, just one of the many benefits of membership. Thank you for listening. Have a mindful day.